In our last lesson, we tested that a user could navigate to the Compose page. Now let's test that a user can actually create a post. Let's go ahead and create a test for the Compose Live. And let's do that under Tests with Twitter Web, Live, and Compose Live Test. Now, just as before, we'll need a What Twitter Web Con case, and let's import Phoenix Live your test. Now, Compose Live is also behind authentication, just like Timeline Live. So let's go ahead and add the setup function that we used before, register and login user. Now let's go ahead and write our first test that a user can create a new post. Just as before, we'll take in the connection struct and mount our live view. In this case, we'll ignore the HTML and we'll use a path helper for the compose path. Now we want to target a form that we'll have on the page. Phoenix Live View Test comes with a form helper that acts in a very similar way to Element. Let's take a look at it. The form helper takes a view, a CSS selector, and the form data. So let's go ahead and write it with view form. Here, let's target an element with an ID of new post. And let's pass the form data. Now the form we're gonna have is gonna be a form for a post. The change set will be about a post. So we expect to have a form for a post. And in that form, we expect to have an input for body. So that's how we would write this in a map. We're gonna pass body and say, this is awesome. Now, just like we could render click on an element, render submit can take a form and submit the form. So render submit also has an alternate version where you can target an event directly and pass the form data to it. And we'll take a look at that later. For now, let's use it with a form helper. Now, the way our application logic behaves, when we submit the form, we want to be redirected to our timeline where we should be able to see the post. So instead of asserting something about the HTML that this renders, let's go ahead and assert that we should follow a redirect. And we should be redirected to the timeline path. Since we're being redirected to another timeline, and we've seen that follow redirect is smart about this, we know that it'll mount to live view. So let's go ahead and grab the OK, ignore the view, and grab the HTML it returns. Now with this HTML, we can actually make an assertion that the post body is present there. So let's go ahead and write that we can assert that in this HTML, we should see the this is awesome string. Let's go ahead and run it. As we might expect, we don't have this new post ID. So let's go ahead and add it to our compose live HTML. Let's replace this form with a form for tag since we'll be needing that. We'll take in the change set, the change set we haven't defined by the way, so we expect that error. And here let's give the ID that we're targeting, so new post. Finally, I'll change this class to a keyword argument and close that tag. Since we're using this form of the form for helper, we need to close the form with a regular form tag. So this works. Let's go ahead and run the test again. And sure enough, we don't have that change that assigned. Let's go ahead and add that to the compose. Now, just like we have a current user and we're assigning it, let's go ahead and assign the change set. We're going to use timeline module to get to this change set. We can do it this way. Timeline change post and we need to pass an initial post. So this will be an empty post. Now, none of those are alias. So let's go ahead and alias them. And the post is under timeline. Finally, let's pass that change set to our assigns. And let's rerun our test. Excellent. Now we get a really helpful error. And this is coming from that form helper. Notice that we are finding the new post ID but we know that it doesn't have a Phoenix attribute attached to it. So that's the form helper combined with a render submit being really smart about knowing that this form element that we're targeting should have a render submit or a Phoenix submit attribute attached to it. So let's go ahead and add that. Let's call it save and rerun the test. Now notice that because we've specified the form data in our form helper, the error is telling us that it cannot find that post body 
like a text area or an import or a select, some type of input that would correspond to this post body. So once again, the form helper is really helpful when combined with the render submit. Let's go ahead and add a text area inside the compose box. Pass in the form and we'll call it body. And let's add a nice placeholder here. What's happening? And let's add a class to make it look nice. Let's go ahead and rerun the test. And now we see that we're submitting the event, but we're not handling that event in the compose line. So let's go ahead and do that. Go ahead and create a handle event. It'll take the save event. And here we'll actually get the form data. So in this case, it's going to be post. And I'll just assign the post params here. Now, from any handle event, we want to return a no reply in the socket. But what do we want to do with this data? What we want to do is grab the current user, put the, the current user's ID into those post params so that we know that this post is being created by that user, and then pass that to the timeline create post function. That'll create a post and it'll return an OK post. So let's go ahead and do that. Grab the current user from the assigns, which if you've noticed, we set up here. And then take the params we're going to put into the post params, the user ID. And now we can pass that to the timeline create post. Now we'll do a case statement, but we'll only handle the successful case right now. We'll add a test for the failure in a second. So in the successful case, we'll get an OK and the post back, but we'll ignore it. And now we can return our no reply socket. But in our test, we expect that we're going to be redirected to the timeline path. So let's go ahead and push redirect to this socket. And we'll be redirected to the timeline path. All right, let's go ahead and run the test again. And it passes. Perfect. Before we look at the failure case, let's go ahead and consider for a second the alternate use of render submit, the one that takes three arguments. We've already seen how helpful the error messages were when we were test driving this form. But just to drive home how important the form helper is, I want to go ahead and use the other format and see what we can delete and still have the test pass. So we'll go ahead and comment out the form and we'll pass in the event name, so save and we'll pass in the form data. And let's run this test. Now this test passes, and it'll continue passing so long as we have this handle event, save, callback defined. But what's terrible is that you can actually go ahead and delete the form from the markup, and your test would still pass. And that's a huge false positive. Our application in production doesn't even have a form, but our tests are telling us that everything's working as expected. So that's why the form helper is so important. And that's why I advise everyone to use it as much as possible. So I'll go ahead and set this back to the way it was and rerun the test. And we're back to normal. Now let's go ahead and handle the case when form submission fails. Let's write a test that will say that the user is notified if posting fails. We'll take the connection instruct and we'll mount the live view much like we did before. And we'll grab the view and we'll submit the form with a new post ID. But this time the post body will be nil. So I know this is going to raise an error for us. This is going to return an error because we cannot submit an empty post. Let's go ahead and render submit that. And since we won't be redirecting, we can actually grab the return value and make an assertion about the HTML that it renders. We expect this HTML to have an error somewhere in that HTML that tells us that that field can't be blank. So let's go ahead and say can't be blank. But this can't is HTML escaped. So let's go ahead and write the format that is escaped and call be blank. All right, let's go ahead and run this test. And as expected, it fails, and it fails because we're not handling the case when we return an error with a change set. 
So let's do that in the Compose Live. Here with a chain set. And here we just need to return a no reply where we assign the chain set to the socket. Let's rerun the test. And it might surprise you, but we can't find this string on the HTML. Why is that? Well, in our form, we forgot to add the error tag. That's why I like to test the failure case. So let's go ahead and add that below the compose box and it'll be F and body. And let's rerun our test. Perfect. So now we have both tests are pass. And this is the core of how we wanna test form submissions. Once again, use the form helper. It's really powerful. The form helper plus render submit make our tests much, much better. In our next lesson, we'll talk about testing form validations before we even submit the form. I'll see you there.